So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I paid $70 to go about four and a half miles for 12 minutes in a lift on Saturday. We're gonna talk about the situation right now. Does this solve the problem? We're gonna talk about how people blamed our governor, Steve Sisolak, for this whole problem, and it wasn't even his fault. Just goes to show how politics has kind of infected us to a point where we're blaming the wrong people without knowing all of the situation. And we're gonna talk about if this is going to be something that you're willing to do while you're here because people wanted the full Vegas experience back. It might not be this bad forever. It might just be a temporary blip as surge pricing is back in Nevada, but I thought we would go over all of this today. How's it going, everybody? My name is Steven, and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. If you guys are regular viewers of the channel, you notice I took a few days off, but I've still been posting content and doing live streams. I want to get back to the daily videos, so I want you guys to go ahead and email me your daily video ideas. Now, daily video ideas, to me, are not, you should go to the haunted mine that's 35 miles out of town and do an entire entire thing out there because you can't live stream those and they're very difficult to edit. So if you have something that I can talk about in the studio, give me your ideas. Stephen J at notleavinglasvegas.com. Stephen, the letter J at notleavinglasvegas.com. You'll also get video credit. I will actually say your name and say this idea was brought to you by blankety blank blank. And if that's your username on YouTube, that's pretty cool because that works for me. Now we'll give you, we'll give you credit, but you know, if you guys want to support the channel further, that's a way to support the channel. We have Patreon, we have channel memberships. We also have VegasFaceMask.com still. If you guys have to travel, if you guys have to wear these for school or for work, uh, head on over to VegasFaceMask.com. My wife is still making them as orders come in. We are still shipping them to Canada and to places where they're having outbreaks for extra, but the shipping in the United States is still always free. VegasFaceMask.com, no S at the end. So I spent $70, 70 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the story in a few minutes, but we have to kind of play catch up so we understand the situation better because without knowing how we got to this place, then we won't know why that happened, right? That's the way that works, isn't it? So we have an emergency declaration, and as far as I know, it's still in place for some reason. Steve Sisolak, who's our governor, uh, he actually signed an emergency declaration way back in March of 2020. Obviously, every governor in the state signed them. And the reason they signed those was a mixture of, yes, it's an emergency declaration, we don't know what COVID is, it's horrible, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we wanted to get federal money, quite frankly. This would give federal money from uh, FEMA to the states. If you sign an emergency declaration, you get that federal juice, as they call it here on the channel. <laughs> so he signed an emergency declaration. And before I go any further, I want to ask you guys the question of the day before I completely forget. Are you willing to pay $70 to ride 12 minutes in an Uber or a Lyft to go four and a half miles? Is it that important to you? Are you happy with the solution? Because it might not be that way forever, but it is that way right now. Now, so just so you know, budget for that in Vegas if you need a ride. So we go back to Steve Sisolak signing the declaration. And when he signed that declaration, it automatically precluded uh, ride share companies from being able to charge what we call surge pricing. Surge pricing is when uh, the mathematical algorithm in an app says there's this many drivers on the road, there's this many people requesting a ride, we're going to charge more for that ride. Now, I don't know if Uber and Lyft drivers get a higher percentage of the rides when it's more expensive, when it's $70 when it's usually 13. The ride that I took would cost me about 12 to 13 dollars. I'm not sure. So if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, leave us a comment below. I know Mr. Uber's out there. Mr. Uber, what do you say? And we'll be able to get some good information on you. But, you know, so that's what that did. Now, people blame Steve Sisolak for this. It wasn't his fault, actually. I even did the same thing, and I didn't know any better. Turns out that I think in 2015, was it, when Steve Sisolak was just a county commissioner here, he was not the governor of Nevada. He could sign all the emergency declarations he wanted, but it would only pertain to his house. I wonder if he ever did that. That would be pretty funny. Um, he, yeah, we had a, we had the legislature here in Nevada pass a law that said if an emergency declaration ever did get signed, we would uh, basically put surge pricing on pause. And for some reason, we have not actually gone out of the emergency declaration here. We're still in it. Who knows? Maybe they're getting that government money still. But uh, when he, when we did that. We didn't know that COVID would be the emergency declaration. We didn't realize that it would be a slow burn to get people back. But once they did come back, it would be a big problem for transportation in town. So people blame Sisolak erroneously. It wasn't his fault. 
it was his fault in a way that we got to that point where it was obviously March, April, and now May before it actually got lifted and they actually put some things in place to allow people to actually get the surge pricing back. And why do we want the surge pricing back? Because it dr brings the drivers back, quite frankly. The drivers have to have incentive to go ahead and work during these times when it's super busy. If you've ever gone to a major sporting event in any city, you know it's hard to get out of that place. Well, now you're going to a Golden Knights game, like for example, tonight, the Golden Knights. Game 6, T-Mobile Arena, 18,800 people. We're actually technically the first building in any professional sport to welcome a full crowd back, so go Vegas, go. I'm so proud of that. So uh, so awesome that Vegas is the first city to do that, right? And um, you, are you going to go ahead and you're going to drive in and out? It's going to take you over an hour and a half to do an Uber or Lyft trip from there. You're going to do that for $13? No, you're going to want to do that for a slightly more money. It's the way the capitalism works. It's supply and demand, and it's fair to the drivers, okay? So I don't blame the drivers for sitting at home and picking up all the unemployment insurance when it's going to take them an hour and a half to do something they're going to pay a few dollars for. Now we've listed all that. That's a good thing, right? So we're back to where we're at. Again, question, I want to ask you, are you willing to pay $70 for this kind of thing? And it might not happen that way forever. We're going to get to how I paid $70 for this trip in just a few minutes and what happened and why I did it. But um, it might not happen forever. See, as more of these drivers come back, they're going to be incentivized by the companies and by surge pricing to get paid more for these trips. And as they come back, it's going to put more drivers on the road in the mathematical calculation in the app that says it should cost $70. We'll say, okay, there's more drivers on the road it might cost 35 bucks 40 bucks might cost 12 dollars again depending on how many drivers are actually out there that's a good thing that's a positive thing okay so it might not last forever but at the same time if they don't come back then i think it's obviously a given that we have broken the system by giving away too much money to people to stay at home and i'm interested in your comments on that below what do you think would you come back if you're an Uber driver? They've incentivized me. I was going to sign up for Lyft years and years ago when we were literally having problems paying our rent every single month and it was just a hard time for us. Um, I never signed up, but they still send me text messages. Hey, complete five or 10 rides in your first day coming in as a driver, get $500 bonus. So they're trying very hard, the companies. Now the state's gotten in and they changed the laws. That's positive. But why did I pay $70 for a trip? Well, on Saturday, we had an interesting day. Caroline went out with her friends to Caesars Palace. They ended up at the Bellagio. I went out to film my side-by-side -side video that shows you the incredible footage from April of last year versus this last month. You should watch that video on my channel. It's a very good video and you should subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so during this because that would be so nice of you and you would get all sorts of great content. And uh, when that was over, I did my live stream. My wife, Caroline, said, we're at the piano bar. I met them at the piano bar. They were having some drinks. So I decided to drive everybody home and leave my vehicle on the strip. Drove everybody home, thought to myself, I'll just get a lift. It's one in the morning. It was like 12.48 a.m. Can't be that bad. Now, to the credit of Lyft, I got a car in seven minutes. I mean, seven minutes. You don't get a car in seven minutes in Las Vegas. But when I opened up that app and saw the estimate of the price, I was completely sticker shocked. It was crazy. Now, I always tip an Uber driver about 10 or $15 because my father drove for a very long time in the taxi industry. I know what they go through. I want to be that good customer for them, and I hope you guys are a good customer too. But at the same time, you know, I, it was insane. An Uber XL cost $129 that day. Suffice it to say, I didn't need an Uber XL. I'm a local and I'm going to where I'm going to go. But anyways, the ride was about 4.5 miles. It took me about 12 minutes uh, for him to pick me up and complete the trip uh, from when he got me to when I got down there. And I said, wow, Vegas is back with a vengeance. But that's what's going to happen until more drivers come back. And let's just hope and pray that more drivers come back. Or if they don't come back, that Lyft and Uber can recruit some more drivers and that they can solve this problem. And surge pricing will be 35 bucks or maybe $25 from the trip that should cost 12 or $13 as opposed to 70 because I was a little bit out of control. I didn't mind paying it. I'd rather everybody gets home safe. I didn't want Caroline to you know, drive her car home and I drive mine home so we could save a few bucks and have a ridiculous $10,000 after fees DUI in our life because that's what nobody wants. Plus, it endangers other people when you drive drunk. Man, just last night, I'm driving on Las Vegas Boulevard. I'm behind a car that has Georgia license plates. This guy is swerving, swaying, stopping. I pulled up. I was going to turn, and now I'm next to him. His window's down, which is never a good sign. When windows are down, drivers are usually trying to sober up or stay awake. And I said, hey, uh, are you drunk? 
I mean, I'm talking to the guy. He's just a normal looking dude, you know, not, not like anything gnarly. And I said, uh, he goes, oh, no, I'm not drunk. I know I'm not paying attention. He didn't sound drunk to me. I said, dude, just watch yourself. The cops like to pull people like you over to make sure that you're safe and you don't want that. He goes, oh, no, I got it. I got it. But that's the point. You know, don't drive drunk while you're out here. Take a $70 Uber or Lyft if you have to. But it was a very eye-opening experience for me. I'm curious to know, again, I'm going to ask you the question of the day a third time. Would you be willing to pay $70 while you're out here if it meant you got a car in six minutes and you got to get to your destination faster? Or is that something that you just didn't budget for? And it would be definitely a sticker shock like it was for me. But that's my video and I'm sticking to it. My name is Steven and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I hope you guys would like, share, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for future notifications. Ways to support us are in the first pinned comment of this video. We have some gear with not leaving Las Vegas on it. Look at that hat behind me. That's a sexy looking hat, ain't it? Uh, we're going to sell those soon too. So stay tuned to the channel. Daily videos. You guys want to be in on that? Steven J at not leaving Las Vegas. Send me something that I can do in the studio, a topic that I can talk about. I'll give you credit in the video. Now's the time of the video where I say three, two, one click. Are you ready? I get nice and close to the camera. Mm -hmm. Mug for the camera. We say three, two, one, and thanks for watching. You're the best part of my morning. I just want you to know that. I do these in the morning. I release them in the afternoon, but I always love doing them. And click. <laughs>